Good morning again. Well, it's a few days later and uh, I'm off to Salisbury. Uh, as I say, I found another little Himalayan that's half the mileage of the one I tried the other day. Um, I'm going to give it another go. Um, they've also got a scram there. wonder if they'll let me try that out. Right, it's time to hit the road. <laughs> Well, here I am, um, Hayballs in Salisbury. Um, this is the Himmy that I'm going to try out today. So I'm a bit limited on time. I'm on uh, night shift tonight, and this is about an hour away from home. So I've just poodled down this morning. If I get chance, I'm also going to have a quick go on the Scram. So this is uh, a year younger model than the one I tried the other day. This is 2019. This has... 8,700 miles on the clock so it's probably half of what I tried before this one comes with the panniers fitted on it which is quite a bonus because they're quite expensive the Royal Enfield panniers um, don't think he's had anything else aftermarket done to it um, oh it's got a USB 12 volt wired in trickle charge hmm and he said it's got scrapes and bangs and stuff as I suppose you'd expect for a 23 year old bike but uh, let's give this a little go this is a very comfortable position to ride in Who doesn't love a hill start on a new bike? It's got a very definite gear change. Um, the throttle play, I don't have any of that issue that I did with the, uh, the previous one I tried. I'm hoping it might not be quite so vibey as well. Well, there's definitely no vibes at 50, and that's the speed limit on this stretch. So, if I did choose this bike, for example, it's just come out of its three year Enfield warranty. Um, but Hayball have said they will put a further 12 months on it for their warranty. Um, it'll have a full service and something like a 40 point or 41 point inspection check before it leaves. Um, and it would also have um, a new MOT on it and a sort of, you know, full service. So basically it'll be as, as good as it can be leaving the shop. And the brakes are quite good. Not quite sure where he said to go, but we'll go left. I don't actually know Salisbury terribly well. I don't really want to get lost. mile an hour here she's slowish getting there but actually given the road service it's not as vibey as the one I tried the other day corners nicely not go over 60 um, 
but I, I feel if I had done, it still would not be um, vibration-y. Given what it's going to come with, i.e. a year's warranty, um, memo T service, 41 point check, the panniers, these extra gadgets, probably cost a few quid. Um, I kind of can't help thinking that's not bad. Let's see what uh, it's like in smaller spaces. Okay, we're just testing out the steering. You hardly need any throttle in second and it will just still quite happily kind of idle along. Again, like the other one, it's very light, very nimble. Literally not a clue where I am. But an interesting little estate to uh, check out its uh, turning capacity. I do apologise, residents. I promise I'll only go around once, unless I get lost. Very light. Okay, I officially don't have any idea where I am. How the dick am I going to navigate my way back? Well, maybe I could use this helpful compass. If I knew how to read one, that might actually be a goer. <laughs> Up there, straight over that roundabout, left onto Crane Street. So, if there is one way to test out a new bike, I guess getting lost on it is probably as good a way as any. Quite like this bike, you know. It's quite nice. It's a lot of bike for, for the money, I'll give it that. Um, yes, it's not powerful, it is underpowered, we know this. That's an old ground, we're not covering it. This is New Street, good to know. So a lot of the comments um, from the last time I rode were the Honda CB500X will be a lot better for me. It's a lot, you know, it's a more powerful, it's got more go, it's 46 point something horsepower compared to this one's 24 and a half. It's also three times the price. Yeah, you get a lot more bike for your money. But how much off-roading am I going to be doing? How much trailing and trialing and all the rest of it and laning am I going to be doing? I wanted to fall in love with the bike. I'm, I'm going to say I fancy it a lot. Not sure about love, but there's definitely, uh, there's definitely feelings and not the sort of feelings I was getting at 60 mile an hour on the other one I tried. We're going to try standing as well, why not? Oh. Interesting, didn't feel a thing, knees acted as suspension, bike handled it, it was only a speed bump, but it was quite fun. Right, I need to pull over again because I'm not actually sure where the hell I am again. I am enjoying this bike. Just putting that out there. Oh, let's go this way. Churchfields, that sounds familiar. Sorry, no indication. It 
let's have another little stand up. That's a very comfortable position. Mm, quite comfortable with this bike. I quite like it. Cables. All in all, I quite enjoyed that. What do we have here? This is the Royal Enfield Scram 411. It's a Himalayan Scram 411. So this is their demo version. Uh, this is quite a new out bike. Um, the seat height is about the same. I think it's actually supposed to be fractionally uh, slightly lower. Um, I'll tell you what, the seat is actually very comfy. I've only driven it from just down the road to here to put the cameras on. Uh, seat very comfortable. I think the ground clearance on this is a little lower than the Himalayan, but only fractionally. Obviously, this doesn't have all the side bags. It doesn't have a screen. Um, if you wanted all of that, you have to buy it all aftermarket. Puts the cost up quite a lot. Uh, this has an aftermarket exhaust on it, the Enfield Precision exhaust, um, which is quite brappy. Let's let's describe it as that. Um, it sounds quite good. So let's uh, give this a little trundle, see what we think. It's actually less upright on the side stand than the uh, Himalayan, which is quite reassuring. <laughs> Himalayan feels like it's uh, going to gonna go over the opposite direction when you get on it so this has the meteor setup instead of the himalayan obviously there's no screen doesn't have all the other things that, it, that the uh, himalayan has uh, so you've literally just got exactly the same setup as the meteor with the questionable tripper so i don't know if you can hear that yeah she's quite brappy brap, brap. <laughs> yeah, I think brappy is the word. Riding position very similar to the Himalayan uh, upright. Um, well, I'm going to do the infamous hill start. My right, boys. Let's see if I can not make a twat of myself doing this. Not bad, Charles, not bad. I think you would definitely need a screen and you would definitely want some uh, pannier mounts and panniers and stuff. Maybe I need to do some research on how good these scrams are off-road. Not today, obviously. Um, I thought the scram was more of an urban bike, a more kind of designed to get around town sort of bike. I didn't think it was designed for trails and tracks. I don't know how it compares weight-wise, so I need to look at that. Oh gosh, that pickup from standing is quite impressive. Is that, is that the exhaust or what? What's doing that? Gear change is beautifully smooth. <laughs> I can't help but laugh at that exhaust. That's quite funny. 
that's put me in a bit of a dilemma. I mean, obviously, still need to ride the Honda. I am really concerned I'm not going to be able to touch the floor on the Honda. And I know I can get it lowered, but how am I going to test ride it if it's too tall? Oh, this bike. I quite like this bike. This is not good. I'm not going to get a second hand one of these. That's fun. We have a little roundabout. I'm going to try not to brap it through here. I just want to see how it is on all these little twisties. Again, the steering, like the Hemi, is very light. It's a very nimble little bike. Oh, there's a bike without a back wheel. So, so light this steering. I genuinely feel like I could just hold it with a finger. And the brakes are quite good. Good to know. Oh dear, what have you done? You lot suggested I take this bike out. It's your fault. I really like it. Oh. I wonder how heavy it is. No, oh, when I first got on it and I said about the vibrations through the seat, I can't actually feel them anymore. Maybe my arse has gone numb. <laughs> uh. Anyone want a second wife that they'd like to give a wedding present to? <laughs> so two completely different but very similar bikes. I really liked that and then I got on this and I really liked that <sighs> good morning well I think it's morning I've just finished a night shift so it, it could be Easter for all I know I really don't know I just thought I'd finish off this um, this vlog with um, some ponderings that I've been having overnight. Uh, it's probably never the best time to make a decision, so I won't be deciding anything just yet. But these are some of the things that I've thought about. First of all, I will be keeping Lagatha. I love that meteor um, to bits, and the only time that I would exchange her is if I was going to go up to the 650 twin meteor. Um, that won't be any time soon. Uh, she's a great bike, she's staying, she's a road bike. But I'd quite like an adventure bike as well, to do some lanes and some trails and stuff, um, perhaps in Europe. So that's what I'm after, is a second bike. You guys have come up with some amazing suggestions um, and I have looked at pretty much all of them. Um, I do have quite a a strict list, a, a kind of restriction list, which really narrows things down. So the first one is, um, it can't be too tall. I'm only, I'm only five six, and I got little legs, so that's a bit of a, a deal breaker on some of them. Even the ones you can lower, the lowering kits just don't always cut it. Secondly, I work for the NHS, so there is a budget, and it's not that big. 
Thirdly, um, I don't want a bike that's too powerful. Uh, let's face it, I have been riding less than a year, so I don't want some 1200cc rocket that I'm just not going to be able to hold on to. And uh, I also want to be able to pick it up. Okay, I can deadlift 100kg, but bikes are slightly different and um, yeah, I want to be able to lift it. So what am I after? Well, ideally, um, a 50-50 bike, a bike that's good 50% of the time on the road, 50% of the time on the trail. Something that's a real plodder, that's easy to fix and cheap to maintain and run. I want something I can pick up because invariably on a trail I'm probably going to get it stuck or lay it down. I want a bike that's great to modify or personalise and make it my own. Uh, it's got to be comfortable and it has to be the sort of bike that helps me increase my confidence, not knock it. Um, and lastly, it's got to be something that gives me smiles for miles. That's what it's all about. So these, uh, these test rides were really, really helpful. I'm getting closer to a decision. Um, I'm still going to ride that Honda, um, the CB500X, provided I can touch the floor. So uh, we'll, we'll give that a go. Well, I hope you enjoyed um, today's vlog. Um, I'm going to bed now because I'm shattered and I have night shift again tonight. So if you enjoyed today, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. It's free to do it. Share it with your mad friends and um, stay tuned to find out where I go next. Thank you.